Hello and welcome to Cooking the Books with Heather. Today we're going to continue working out of Tanya Holland's um, Brown Sugar Kitchen Cookbook and we're going to be making herbed mushroom spoon bread. This is, she says, sort of like a cross between a cornbread and a souffle. So there's whipping egg whites. There's um, actually you cook the cornmeal before you add this. I don't think I've ever had spoon bread, honestly. I know it's a southern thing, but it's nothing that um, anybody in my sphere has ever done. So, uh, but it seemed interesting and we all love, uh, we all love mushrooms and so sounded good. The first thing I have to do is quite a bit of prep. I'm going to um, mince some shallots, which means just a really small dice and they're gonna go in one bowl. I'm going to slice up my mushrooms. So you can use any kind of mushrooms that you like. I have, uh, she calls for just white button mushrooms. I have a combination of those and some cremini's that I, uh, which baby portobello's, same thing, that I got from my uh, produce box this week, which is another reason why I decided I wanted to make this recipe. I have some thyme, which I'm very annoyed because they're all in little bitty stems instead of long ones, which means I'm going to have to pick it all off a lot more um, individually rather than sort of stripping leaves off of a long stem, which is going to be annoying, but I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to have to separate some eggs and I think that's it. You guys probably won't see a lot of this, but I thought that I would go ahead and film it just because, you know, it's, it's something you guys don't always get to see from me and we might keep some of it in, we'll see. Started by slicing them thinly and now I'm just gonna sort of mill my um, knife through them until they are as small as I would like them to be. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. It's not a great dice, but, or great mix, but whew. The shallots were very pungent. I have some, had some dripping issues with my eyes, my nose, everything. I think I'm okay now. <laughs> So I'm gonna slice up my mushrooms. Um, I don't think, there, there's not any real indication of how thick to slice them. So I'm just gonna go sort of medium, I guess, and put those in a separate bowl because they go in after the shallots. And I'm just gonna get those all sliced up. So slice my mushrooms and the next step is to pick the thyme, which I'm not real thrilled about, but I'm just gonna pick the leaves off of the stems and I didn't really measure it, but I'm gonna kind of go by eye and it should be fine. Um, I'm gonna just put it in the same bowl with the mushrooms because they go into the pot, into the pan at the same time. So if they're, um, if you have a nice long stem, you can just pull like that and get everything off. And so for this one, it's not so bad, but there are some small ones on here, small side stems and I don't know. I wanna see how. Picky I'm gonna be about that. Thyme has small enough leaves that I mostly don't bother to chop them up. Um, and if you are making a stew or anything with a sauce, you can easily just leave it on the stems and the leaves will come off and you can just pull the stems out before you serve it. And that is perfectly fine. I am gonna call that enough. I think that looks like about the amount she calls for. And next I need to separate some eggs. I'm gonna move this away, clean up a little bit. So I'm going to put the whites in here and the yolks in here, and I'm gonna use, the, use those uh, in two separate steps to come. So keep my fingers crossed I don't mess up. 
because we're going to whip these whites until they are a soft peak at least. Yeah, medium stiff peaks. Okay, so the last thing I need to do is to prepare my pan and probably heat my oven, which I'll get going after I do this. But so this is like a one and a half quart, I think, or 1.4 liters. It's a good thing about this book. She includes both measurements. I think this is 1.6 liters, whatever, it's fine. Um, baking or souffle dish and you uh, butter it. So I'm just going to, I've got some unsalted butter here and I'm just gonna rub it around and get it all covered. And I think that is all we have to do over here. So we will meet you at the stove in just a minute. So now we have to cook the shallots and the mushrooms before we can put them in our bread because they certainly won't cook enough in the bread to be tasty. So you need to cook them before you put them in the bread. I've got some unsalted butter over medium heat. And so I'm gonna put, put these in here and cook the shallots for a little while first. I turn my heat up just a smidge, it's been maybe four minutes since I put them in and I'm ready to add in our thyme and our mushrooms. It's gonna be a lot of mushrooms for this pan, but it's how much it calls for. And then she says to salt and pepper this. There are no measurements for the salt and pepper in this, um, just so it's kind of like you normally would to taste. That's I'm gonna do a couple of big pinches of salt, kosher salt, and some fresh cracked black pepper. There we go. There's no other salt in this dish, so yeah. No other places where she tells you to add salt or pepper. So this is it. And we're gonna cook these um, until the, so when you cook mushrooms, they release water and then that water gets evaporated or um, reabsorbed. I think it mostly gets evaporated through the cooking method. Um, and then the mushrooms are pretty much done. You don't you don't want them to be wet going in here, so we're going to uh, cook these until that process happens. She says about eight minutes. I'll keep track. So you can see here we've got a lot of extra liquid in the pan, and so we're just kind of waiting for that to go away, and then we'll be done with this for now. I'm gonna call this done. You can see they're still moist, but there's no standing water in the, or liquid, fluid in the pan um, when I move it around. And so now I'm gonna switch this out, take this off of the heat and put a, she says, she says a heavy bottomed um, saucepan. I'm gonna use my saucier because we're gonna be whisking this and the saucier is great for that. Um, I'm going to put in some whole milk. And I'm going to turn the heat up to medium high, as she instructs. And we're going to let this go until there are bubbles forming around the edges, which means it's about to boil, but we don't want it to fully boil because boiling milk is bad. So I had a few bubbles already, so it's kind of hard for me to tell, but I'm pretty sure I'm getting some more and I can hear it like it's kind of boiling under the surface. So I think, I think we're, we're ready for the next step here. And now we're going to slowly whisk in some cornmeal. Um, I just happen to have fine ground white cornmeal on hand. So that's what I'm using. Okay. 
All right. So now I'm gonna turn this down to low and whisk this constantly for about 10 minutes um, until it thickens up. It's been about 10 minutes and honestly, my hand hurts, my arm hurts, I'm just done with whisking. So I'm gonna turn off the heat. I'm going to add some more unsalted butter and some grated cheddar cheese. This is the same white cheddar that I had for the biscuits that we made recently. And so I'm going to whisk these in off the heat. Um, I just want to move it to the side a little bit until the butter's all melted and the cheese is all incorporated. Now I'm going to add one at a time my egg yolks, as one at a time as I can make it happen anyway. And then whisk those in. Now I'm done with whisking, but there are no instructions in this recipe about when to add the mushrooms to your batter. Um, I looked online and I didn't see, oh, I should have done that. Anyway, I didn't see anywhere, I found this recipe online, but everywhere that I found it, except for one place, um, didn't include when to add mushrooms. And the one place I did see it was after you fold in the whipped egg whites. And I think that's probably a bad idea because, you know, you don't want to knock down your egg whites any more than you have to. So before we move over to whisk our egg whites, I'm going to incorporate our mushrooms with our batter. Our mushrooms and our shallots and our thyme into our cornmeal batter here. I'm just gonna stir it up, get it all mixed up. And we're gonna leave this off of the heat while we whisk the egg whites. All right, that's starting to look pretty much like I would expect. So that's a good thing. We'll meet you back at the counter to whisk the egg whites. So now we need to whip our egg whites. I have just, just a stand or a hand mixer here instead of the stand mixer because I didn't want to get all that out. So I'm going to whip these until they are have medium stiff peaks, which means when you pull this up, the peaks curl a little bit. They don't have to stand up straight, but you don't want them to curl a lot. So I think we're there. Yes, that's pretty good. So now I just need to fold the egg whites into the batter. It says to fold these into that instead of the other way around. So I'm going to put all of these in here and then fold. All right. So folding, sort of go through the middle and then pull some over the top, over and over. We're trying not to, um, deflate our egg whites, but instead use them to lighten up the batter. You don't want to have too many white spots, but you also don't want to stir it too much. to the point where I think I'm done. You s there are still a few um, little white streaks, but I don't want to overdo it. So now I'm going to pour it into my, my very slippery prepared pan, which seems like it's not big enough, but this is the size that she told me to do. So I'm not sure about this. My pan is actually slightly larger than she suggested even. So 
This is gonna be fun. I'm gonna leave it in this pan, but I am in fact going to put it on a baking dish. So I'm going to put it on a baking tray just in case it overflows. This goes into my 350 degree oven for 50 minutes until it is puffed and golden brown. Puffed gives me pause, but we're gonna do it. And we'll let you know what it looks like when we're done. On this episode of Cooking the Books with Heather, you watched me make herbed mushroom spoon bread from Tanya Holland's Brown Sugar Kitchen cookbook. And I've never had anything like it. Uh, it was a little difficult because you have to whip the egg whites and fold them in and you have to cook the mushrooms and the, the shallots, you know, shallots um, and the herbs and everything beforehand. But I think I enjoyed this more than I enjoy most cornbread, honestly. Um, it was very moist, so I, I'm not really had souffle very often, certainly not a savory cheese souffle. souffle. I've had a chocolate souffle for dessert, delicious. I don't think I've ever had a savory souffle and that is what this reminded me a lot of because it was um, very moist and very sort of risen and eggy, um, but I enjoyed it. The kids liked it okay, my husband liked it okay, but I think I enjoyed it more than anyone else. Um, I did have a little bit of a problem with the recipe. Uh, you may have seen it overflowed my uh, vessel a little bit as it baked. It was okay, still worked, it was still delicious, but I do think that um, either I did something very wrong or the one and a half quart uh, baking dish that she calls for is not quite enough. Anyway. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm not sure I'll be making it again, but if it's if you like spoon bread, if you like um, a moister souffle-like cornbread, I would certainly give it a try. Um, and I reheated some of it in the oven because um, we had lots of leftovers because it does make quite a bit for our family of four. Um, so, and they re it reheated really pretty well, although my husband did say it didn't taste quite as much of cornbread on reheating. I think you got a lot, I got a lot more of the mushroom flavor um, after it was reheated. Why that is, I don't know. But um, anyway, if you enjoyed watching me make this, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and come back and watch me make something else next week. Mm -hmm.